the very first conversation we're going to have in human growth and development is going to be a conversation about a single living cell because that's exactly how we start in this world as a single cell and this class is going to start at that point and we will end when we depart this earth so let us talk about that living cell every person starts as a single cell at conception the egg which is called the ovum and the sperm unite to create a brand new organism the egg and the sperm are called gamete cells which are our reproductive cells and when they unite and they create together one brand new single cell this single cell is actually called the zygote z-y-g-o-t-e and the zygote is a totally unique one-of-a-kind individual you <laughs> but the zygote cell actually contains genes that have been passed down for thousands of years and if any of you have ever gone on ancestry.com and you you go back through you can my goodness one time I went back all the way to the 1400s it's hard to even fathom but you know all of that genetic material has been passed down all these generations later and of course can go further and further and further back than that so it is really quite fascinating um, all together so all living things start off with uh, one cell and cells are what continue to allow us to grow and sustain life um, the instructions of who we're going to be are contained in the molecules of these substances and this these molecules are called our DNA um, we actually have approximately six billion miles inside of us of DNA because each individual cell actually has six miles of uh, DNA on each cell uh, it's absolutely amazing and uh, fascinating so uh, the molecules are called chromosomes and they are inside the nucleus of the cell our chromosomes they actually contain the instructions and those instructions are called our genes and we have approximately 20,000 genes inside of us and specific genes are located on specific chromosomes don't worry I'm gonna have content you're going to be watching content and uh, hopefully reading the book and I, this is a it's a, a lot actually because it's so overwhelming to think about you know oh my gosh we've got all of this DNA we have genes we have chromosomes we have all this genetic material uh, it's it's hard to even fathom because we start off with just this one cell and of course we don't think of ourselves that way at all we just think of ourselves as human beings but we don't think about all that it entails to be a human being and so you know we've got our chromosomes and as I said they contain the instructions the instructions are our genes and specific genes are located on specific chromosomes and then surrounding each gene <laughs> is additional DNA and RNA which is another molecule so all this additional DNA and RNA they can alter they can silence they can change or they can can connect those genes throughout one's life and this is called my my excuse me 
methylation. So uh, it really is incredible. I mean, you could have, uh, you know, illness inside of you or disease, and it's with you all of the time and through uh, either genetic mutation, uh, some kind of a change from the environment, it can turn on uh, or it, it won't. So let's talk about um, our chromosomes. So um, the egg will bring 23 chromosomes to the party. The sperm will bring 23 chromosomes to the party. And together, when the egg and the sperm unite and become that new one individual cell, they will have 46 total chromosomes. And out of that 46, the 23rd chromosome, 23rd of each one, remember they're each bringing 23 for 46, the 23rd chromosome is the only one that is not an autosome. In other words, the 23rd chromosome for the egg, it will determine whether the child will be a girl and the sperm will determine whether the child will be a girl or a boy. It is actually the male that determines the sex. So the sperm, there's the sperm is either going to carry the genetic material for a girl or for a boy. So you actually have two types of sperm in that respect. Um, interestingly enough, the male sperm uh, is actually lighter than the genetic material female sperm um, because the female sperm has more genes in it. Uh, the male sperm has less genes it's carrying and so because of that it can swim faster and it's lighter. So uh, when the sperm reach the egg and uh, implant itself into the egg, there's actually more male embryos that are conceived than female embryos. So even though uh, more male sperm make it to uh, the egg than female sperm, uh, they, we have a greater loss of the male zygote than the female in the first few weeks and at the third trimester. And in the end, more boys are born in the USA than girls. So again, the father determines the sex um, and it's XY for the boy, XX for the girl. And we can have some chromosomal anomalies related to your XY chromosomes um, and they can uh, give a variety of uh, difficulties for children born with them. So let's start off by talking about the actual chromosomes in our bodies. So we have our uh, chromosomes and they are in the nucleus of the cell, the zygote, and those approximate 20,000 genes are part of those chromosomes. And so those genes are those segments which are located on specific chromosomes. Okay, think of them as little segments of the chromosomes. So the genes are the sections or segments of DNA that are carried in the chromosomes and determine specific human characteristics. Since you have a pair of each chromosome, you have two copies of every gene. 
Some of your characteristics come from a single gene, some from combinations of genes. And of course, as I said, each person has approximately 20 to 25,000 different genes. Chromosome number one has the most genes, approximately 3,000. And chromosome Y, and that is your the male chromosome, right, it, as far as sex goes, that has the fewest, fewest, sorry guys, the fewest, a little over 200. So, heredity, and I want you to know this terminology, heredity is the passing of one's genes from one generation to the next. And as I said, just going through Ancestry.com, you're going back and back and back, and that generational uh, story is passing those that genetic material from generation to generation. Sometimes there is a reaction between one's genes and the environment, and when that happens, that is called a phenotype and it's a physical, behavioral, or psychological feature change of a person. Um, we do have two types of phenotypes. We have dominant phenotypes, which show up more often, and we have recessive genotypes, which are less often. Um, so between the phenotype, we also have our genotype and the genotype is the actual makeup of an individual, their genetic makeup. The phenotype is what the individual looks like, the physical, behavioral, and psychological features of a person. So uh, think of it this way. Uh, you know, your phenotype can change because if you live in a sunny environment, you may get sunscreen and your skin will physically change to a darker color. You could have a uh, really curly hair and you could change your phenotype by using a hair straightener. You could have freckles and they may go away sometime or you might actually have them removed. Uh, so you know, that is those changes, um, and, and, and that's critical. Um, you can also have a mutation in a gene, and it certainly can be simple like a change in hair color uh, over the course of your life. You know, I went from brown hair to gray hair, but you can also have something that's not simple at all, something... Um, it could be a, if you live near a toxic waste dump or something, you could have a change, a mutation in, in, in your body, and that would affect your health. So um, what we do have is these things in our bodies, in our genetic makeup, called alleles, alleles. And an allele is one of two or more versions of a gene. An individual person inherits two alleles for each gene, one from each parent. If the two alleles are the same, the individual is homozygous. If they're different, they're heterozygous. And the term was originally used to describe a variation among genes. So think of an allele as a version of a gene. So let's use the example of genes like your pants, okay? All right, so uh, genes are all brands of genes, okay? And the allele is just one brand of a gene, seven for all mankind, okay? So that is your allele. So another example, and I, I am a girl, so this is where my mind's going. Uh, jeans are all shoes. Alleles are sneakers, high heels, flats, 
uh, and, and that's how it works. These alleles can be dominant or recessive, such as earlobes. Some of you may have uh, dominant alleles and you have detached earlobes, and some of you might have recessive alleles and have attached earlobes. And as I said, dominant is more and recessive is less. So that is, uh, it's really quite amazing. So we have our phenotypes, they depend on our genotypes in the environment, and this is actually a whole separate field called behavioral genetics. It's a branch of genetics that deals with the inheritance and environment of behavioral and psychological traits. And uh, we also have, of course, the genome, okay? And you must think of the genome as the full set of genes for an entire species, okay? And this is from like gnats to plants. Um, any two men or women, no matter what their ethnicity, share 99.5% of the genetic code. Humans and chimps, 98%. Humans and every other mammal, 90%. So we, as human beings, are more alike than we are different with the people around us. So uh, this is the end of this lecture. I know it's been huge, uh, but I appreciate your listening to all of it. And the next lecture we're going to have is going to be from uh, conception until a uh, baby is born. So that will be the next lecture. So thank you very much and have a great day.